So there appears to be a new favorite for vice president from progressive lawmakers, Karen Bass. So Karen Bass is a Democratic congresswoman from Los Angeles. Uh, She is in contention to be Biden's VP, one of the finalists. So right now, I believe it's around like it's it's Karen Bass, uh, Susan Rice, (laughs) Kamala Harris, maybe Warren. I feel like Warren's out of the conversation now, though. So there is a potential um, this may happen. Now, look, of course, this is not my first choice. Uh, My first choice, always Nina Turner, but... Joe Biden was never going to pick Nina Turner, so it was always always out of the question. Second choice, Barbara Lee, I think a very realistic choice. Definitely could have been a finalist here, but maybe they thought too risky. So Karen Bass appears to be the choice, and I'll get to in a second. Uh, a couple of people who I trust that are backing Karen Bass for VP. So this political headline, over 300 DNC delegates, members urge Biden to pick Bass for VP. So more than 300 delegates from the DNC and members of the Democratic National Committee, oh, sorry, from the convention and committee, have signed on to a statement pushing Joe Biden to choose Karen Bass as a unity vice presidential pick, Politico has learned. Now, one of those people is Nina Turner. Nina Turner, former co-chair of Sanders' 2020 campaign, signed on to the statement too. Quote, Congresswoman Bass would make an excellent vice president, Turner said. Her commitment to the grassroots is evident in her work from activist to the California legislature to Congress. She has a record of building coalitions, especially during turbulent times. And this skill set is absolutely needed in the critical moment in our nation's history. Moreover, she brings a strong progressive voice to the table that speaks to the future of America. Now, this is a great endorsement for Karen Bass, which makes me think it's not going to (laughs) happen. I just... It's getting to the point where I'm beginning to think he's going to pick Susan Rice. Uh, I I, I really, uh, it's going to be somebody horrible. Um, And, you know, Kamala would would not be a good pick. Uh, But she'd be better than Rice. But, you know, maybe we'll be surprised. (laughs) Maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. I'll get to in a minute um, something Karen Bass was against back in the 90s. That impressed me. But before I do that, let me tell you who else backs Karen Bass, potentially for VP, though he has not signed on to it. Ro Khanna, another former Sanders co-chair, said Bass is a healer at a time the nation needs a healer, a healer, though he did not sign on to the pro-Bass statement and had previously endorsed Warren for vice president. So because he already backed Warren, I think that's why he didn't sign this letter for Bass. But um, I imagine if he didn't sign that letter for Warren that he'd be for Bass. I'd, I I think Warren's out of it at this point. But again, we could be surprised. And even if Warren, again, just to be clear here, there is no VP pick that, that's going to save the Joe Biden presidency or save the Joe Biden uh, uh, campaign. Um, this is really, this election is really about just getting out Donald Trump. And we know anybody who's VP, they're still not the one in charge. They're still going to be having to listen to Joe Biden. So anybody who's picked here, even if they have occasional inclinations to do good things, that's likely going to be quashed with uh, Biden and his administration. But um, I just say this in terms of it does matter in four years, (laughs) because when Biden, it seems unlikely that Biden's going to last eight years. You see him right now. You should try not to. (laughs) He is just not he's not doing well. Um, he's having many horrible moments. Every time he gets interviewed, he says something incredibly stupid. They should just hide him in the basement. If they actually care about winning, just winning. Hide him in the basement. Let him be hidden. What's the media going to do? <laughs> They're going to say, oh, we can't interview Joe Biden. And we'll all be like, oh, isn't that, isn't that crazy? They're hiding him. And then we're all going to forget they're hiding him and be focused on Trump destroying the country. I mean, this is, as I, as, I, as I discussed earlier, you can't really have a discussion about any other policy issue until Trump's out. Trump is this massive cancerous tumor. You have to cut off the tumor to be able to have any discussion about anything else. And again, this election, to me, the way I view it, it's not about voting for who you like because you got two shitty choices. It's about voting who you, voting for who you want to fight. 
I would rather fight Joe Biden than fight Donald uh, than fight Donald Trump. Donald Trump locks up peaceful protesters, snatches people off the street that aren't even doing anything, puts them into unmarked vans and drives off. Tear gases, peaceful protesters that are moms in Portland. There is no discussion with the Trump administration, just neo-fascism. With Biden, I don't expect him to do anything. Don't get me wrong. I don't expect him to do anything. But there's at least a discussion there. There's a fight. And there's a potential because of that fight to be able to grow the movement and continue to grow that pressure and put that pressure on the Democratic Party establishment and continue to, you know, primary out these uh, these more corporate-leaning Democrats. So that's really what this discussion for me is is around. But let me get to a little bit more on... Uh, on Karen Bass here. Bass grew up in a black middle class neighborhood, uh, middle class neighborhood Los Angeles, trained as a physician assistant and worked in an emergency room as the crack epidemic hit LA. She began a substance abuse and treatment center, a nonprofit that grew into the community coalition, which remains an influential advocacy group in the city. At a time when the government moved to further criminalize drug possession and violently, pol- and, and violently police uh, black and brown neighborhoods, Bass argued addiction was a public health crisis and advocated against the infamous 1994 tough on crime law that Biden helped write. She lobbied to replace liquor shops in South LA with housing and grocery stores, battled to build more schools and campaigned to keep children from being forced into foster care. And then she was elected uh, to the California assembly in 2004 uh, and was elected speaker of the assembly two years later, becoming the first black woman to lead a state legislative house. And then I believe in 2010, um, it says here somewhere, but I believe in 2010, that's when she uh, joined Congress. So you have somebody here who was vocally against Biden's crime bill, is also for Medicare for all, is also for the Green New Deal. I'm kind of surprised she's even in the running <laughs> to be vice president. So again, not to say that Bass is, will be running the Biden administration. Obviously, she would not be. But to have at least that person in Biden's ear, I think is important. So when you have people, I mean, for me, it really comes down to people that I trust. I trust Rokana. I especially trust Nina Turner. With them backing her, I think that means something. I think you should put... You should put real weight behind that. That matters. So will this end up being the pick? I'm inclined to say no. <laughs> I'm inclined to say I don't think it will uh, because of because of these pluses. Um, and because she will be that more progressive voice, I don't think they're going to pick her. But I would love to be pleasantly surprised.